Welcome to the celebrated Ashmas Foundation program, John. Yeah, I'm Caleb Piola, the medicine student of the University of Georgia. Yeah, so in this video, we'll be treating a uh, very special topic. Yeah, periodic table. Yes. So I'll just be making a summary on uh, giving the basic highlights of the topic so that you can be well accustomed to everything that can possibly be asked on the topic. So let's get started. So I'll be talking on the history, then we just check through uh, the blocks and basic things. Then we we'll go through the um, basic trends, yeah, in the periodic table and every other thing. So let's just get started. Now, anytime you are talking about the periodic table, there are some things, there are some names that can never be forgotten. Yes, there are some names like that comes to your mind. Yes, we have a lot of them. We have people like Atoy Lavoisa. We have Bezelius. We have Juan Dobrena. So I will I will just talk on what each of them did, their contribution to the periodic table and all of that. Then we have John Newlands. Yeah. We have um Dimitri Mendeleev. I think this one is very common. And then we have Ludamia. We have other people also. And we mostly uh, see book and other. So let's just quickly consider what what each of them did. Yeah. Now, Antoine Lavoisa. Let me start with him. He was the first man to make to classify elements. He classified elements. Yeah. So he was the first. He was the first to make an attempt to classify elements into. So he classified them into two. Yeah. So he used. He divided them into metals and what's non metals. Yeah, so we can have uh, elements with valence electrons, like valence electrons of 1, 2, and 3, they are metals. Elements with valence electrons of 5, 6, and 7, they are, they are non metals. So let's say we have something like sodium 11, if you have to write it, 2, 8, 1. The valence electron is 1. So sodium will be what the melt of. How we get that? Yeah, try this one also. Let's say we have something like um let me use um potassium. Potassium is 19. Are you with me? So if we have to write it, it will be what 2881. Yeah, so this is also what the melt of because it has one billion shell. Let's say we have something like nitrogen now. Nitrogen is number seven. Now, number seven is what? Two, five. The valence shell, the one that is outside, that's what we refer to as the valence number of electrons. That's what we call what? We call it, it's, it's five. So it's a what? Non metal. Nitrogen is a non metal. And all of that. Okay, yes, let's uh, quickly solve a typical fast question on that. If you are asked this next question in your posterity or your coming exam, maybe jump. Or any exam, what will your answer be? Which of these is a uh, metal? Then they gave you option A, oxygen. Option B, um, you were given calcium. Option C, you were given nitrogen. And option D, you were given sulfur. It's a very simple question. Oxygen is what? Uh, eight. Yes, yeah, so you just write it two six. So this is the valence of six. Is it what non-metal six? So this is what non-metal. Let's move on. Nitrogen is what seven two five. This is what a non-metal. Then we have calcium. Calcium is twenty two eight eight two. The what? The metal. And we also have sulfur. 
So for it works. 16, 2, 8, 6. That is what a non metal suit. So this is the only one that is a metal. So take note of that. That was what Bezelius did. About uh, a, a, a ton Lavoisa, I mean, that was what Aton Lavoisa did about elements. He classified elements into metals and then non metals. Okay, so let's move on into um, the next one. Yeah, so the next one we have was Bezelius. Yeah, now the contribution of Bezelius to the periodic table was that he made, he was the one that uh, assigned symbols to elements. Symbols to elements. Yeah, so he, he classified elements, after Lagos had classified elements. Then Bezelius assigned symbols. He did that in the year 1814. Yeah. So they assigned symbols. So it was the one that gave us an idea that okay, we can actually use the first letter, or we use the first letter and any other elements in the case of calcium, or we use their Greek name. Yes, so it was the one that gave us that idea of classifying of um assigning symbols to elements. Don't forget Bezelius end with S symbols. Can you see? Then we tell symbols. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we have someone like uh we have John Dobrina. So in the year 1829, this man actually came up. His full name is Johan Wolfgang Dobrina. Yeah, Johan Wolfgang Dobrina. Yeah, so what he did was that he postulated the law of triads. The law of triads. Yeah, so let's get started. Well, let's, let's, let me quickly explain what that means. So he grouped elements into three theory, like from the word tri. Yeah, so he grouped elements into three theory. So he grouped an element like lithium, sodium, and potassium together. You know, lithium is atomic number seven, potassium is atomic number 29, sodium is atomic number 23. Yes, so what he did was that, like when you when you place it, you put elements into theory, 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 theory. So he said the one that is in the middle of a uh, property that is the average of this other two. For instance, let's add 7 and 39. 7 plus 39, the average will leave you what 46 divided by 2. That's what's 23. Can you see? Yeah, so he classified them theory, 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 theory. Yeah, that was accepted like. For a long while, but yes, a time came when we came to believe that oh, this thing is actually bulky. So that's the limitation of this periodic table. Too bulky. Yeah, like let's say presently we have one white element divided by three. You can imagine the number of classifications we are going to have. These are around yeah, more than 29. And all of that. So it's too bulky, it's too bulky. That's what limited um, John Dobrainer's periodic table. Yes, let's move on now. Let me just quickly paint, paint this up. Yeah. Okay, so we have the next man, John Newlands. John Newlands postulated the law of octaves. From the word oct, yeah, so it's appearing eight, eight. Yes, that was in the year, uh, this one was 1869. Yeah, that's very uh, popular. Yes, so this was like John Newland's division, a while between, like, between these years. I can't remember the exact year, I think 1880 something. Yeah, so like, um, John Newland was to live in law of octaves. What he meant was that. After every eight elements, there's a recurring property. There's a recurring property after every eight elements. After every eight elements. Yes, so that was the what John Newland did. John Newland. Yeah. So from the name John, if you check it out, John, John. This is the middle one. Octaves. Can you see Bezelius? He worked on symbols. Yeah. John Dobrina, he worked on the law of triads. Triads, triads. Okay, let's, let's move on now. The next one is Dimitri Mendeley. 
Now, the Mitrimanian is actually uh, regarded as the father of modern periodic table. Yeah, because I will tell you some things they did. Which I for that, yes. Uh, okay, yes, it's regarded as the father of modern periodic table. So what he did was that the present layout of the periodic table that we have was constructed by the Mitrimanian. So they, uh, they classified elements and even he predicted elements that were not discovered. He, he predicted their properties of elements that were not even yet discovered at the time of constructing that periodic table. So he constructed the periodic table together with us, Ludamia. Ludamia, Ludamia. So the Mitrimani and Ludamia constructed the current periodic table. And the only fault, the only limitation of the Mitrimani was that. He, he, when he was proposing the periodic law, he said elements are arranged uh, in order of in the order of their what atomic weights. Yeah, so this was actually wrong. Yeah. So if we use atomic weights, we we'll have problem. Yeah, so uh, that was what Henry mostly came to correct. Yeah, so Henry mostly using X-ray diffraction techniques. X-ray diffraction techniques. He assigned atomic number, yeah, to all elements. Yeah, so he now discovered that oh, it should have been atomic um, number, not atomic weight. So and he mostly restated the periodic law. He restated the periodic law. He was such a promising scientist. He did that at a very tender age in his twenties, yeah, but he was lost in the yeah. So. We, he, he died very early, actually. Yes, that is just by the way. So he, he used X ray diffraction techniques to assign atomic numbers to elements and then he restricted the, what, the, period, the periodic law. Yes, so he said elements are arranged in order of their atomic number. In order of their atomic number. Yes, so that's just um, everything about the periodic, uh, the history of the periodic table. Let's pick some questions. You can be asked who was the person that uh, proposed the current periodic table, uh, periodic law. Yes, that's what can remove the. Yes, he restated the periodic law after assigning uh, ato atomic numbers to different elements. Yes, so you can be asked a lot of questions on this table. You know, just uh, master it very well and then revisit it over and over again. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's go to the blocks. Yeah, so now, um, before I move on, let's just quickly uh, check this out. This is actually a very common aspect that you should surely have. Yeah, where they will tell you that um, what is the group, what is the period. Now, Yes, how do you identify the period? You know, the periodic table is something like this. As it is coming down, this is what we call the, what, the vertical. Yeah, so this is the vertical. And then something like this is the what? Horizontal. Now, this horizontal is the what? Is the period. This vertical is the what? Is the group. Please don't forget that. Horizontal is the period, vertical is the group. Yeah, if I ask you to mention five laptops presently, like five laptops, you know, yes, I'm sure before you mention the fifth one, you remember HP. Yeah, HP laptop. I'm sure you must have heard of that. Yes, so HP laptop is a very good laptop, that's why you remember. HP is a very good laptop. So H horizontal, P period. Are you following? Then V vertical. And G lot group. Yeah, so vertical is the group, horizontal is the period. Vertical is the group, horizontal is the period. So that's just about, about that. So now there's some how do you identify the period? Periods have the same number of what electronic shell. Electronic shell. Why group has the same number of valence electron? Valence electron. Yeah, let me give you something to remember that you can use space. I'm sure 
especially when you should have heard this before. Yes, electronic shell. Period is what electronic shell. Why for this you can use give. Give. So G V E. Yeah. Yeah, it's silent. Yeah. So group is what? Valence electronic. Valence electron. Let's practice that out. Yeah, let's say sodium, for instance. Sodium is atomic number 11. So we have if we are to write the electronic configuration to be what? 281. So this is the first electronic shell. That is the K shell. This is the second electronic shell. That is the L shell. This is the third one. That is the M shell. Yeah. So how many shells do we have? Three. So sodium is in period three. Period three. Let's check for the group. Group is the valence electron. Like the one that is outside the outermost one. So the group is what this outermost one, the group is what one. So sodium is a period three group one. Are you getting it now? Period three group one. Let's try out another one. Let's try out phosphorus. Phosphorus is atomic number 15. Yeah. So if you are to write it down, we've got 285. So this is what facial. This is what L shell, this is what M shell. The number of shells, one, two, three. So the number of shells, which is the period with what three. So it's in period three. Then the group. The group is the outermost one, this one. So it's in what? Group five. Can you try out the next one? Let's try this out together. Yeah, we are picking fluorine. Number nine. You can just pause this video and try it on your own. Yeah, so let's let's be together and I'm sure you've done that. So that's what two seven. K shell M shell. So how many shell? One, two. So it's in what? Period two. The number of shell. Then the group, the outside one. This outside one. So that's what group seven. We get it now. So it's in period two group seven. Let's try one last one. Aluminium 13. Yeah, so if you have to draw it, it will be what? 2, 8, 3. K shell, L shell, M shell. Yeah, so this is aluminium. How many shells? 1, 2, 3. So period 3. Then group, the outermost one. This was 2, 3. So aluminium is in period 3, group 3. Yeah, we get it now. So that's just how that works. That's just how that works. Okay, yes, let's quickly check. In the periodic table, we have eight groups. Eight groups. Um, now, it's actually 18 um, groups. Actually, yes, we have eight main groups and 10 in the middle. Yeah. And then we have seven periods. Yeah. Now, if I... Uh, go even deeper into this. Let me just add this that most of the elements in the periodic table are metals. Most of the elements in the periodic table are what they are metal. Yeah. Like 90 90 of them. Yes. Around 90 of them. That's 70 percent. You know we have 118 elements in the periodic table. So but seventy-eight percent of the elements in the periodic table are metal. They are metal. And the last element to be discovered in the periodic table is actually was, was discovered in twenty sixteen. So it was discovered in twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah. So that's just um about that. Okay, yes, let's check the eight groups. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Then seven and eight. Yes, so we find they are all what alkaline metals. Group two are all what alkaline eight metals. Now the reason, okay, yeah, I'm coming back to that. Group three are all what boron family, or you call them what icosahedrons. Call them icosahedrons. Group four are called what? Carbon family or what? Crystallogenes. They are called crystallogenes because they all exist as crystals. Yeah. Diamond, graphite, 
like most of them, even to the next one, three, four, like the existence of these dogs. There are five, is what, nectogenes. Then we have these ones with childhood genes. This is you are equal to the liver situation. And then the reason why they are called childhood genes is because they have affinity for copper holes. Copper holes. Yeah. Then group seven, they are what? Allogenes. Allogenes. And group eight are what? Aerogenes or local gases or rare gases or inert gases. Now, the meaning of allogenes is salt formats. The form sort. The form sort. Before we move on, I want to give you something you've not done that before. Click on the subscribe subscribe button, like and share the video immediately after you're done. Yes, just click on the subscribe button like that while we move on. So these are the groups of the periodic table. Yeah, yeah. So we have the periods also. Yeah. Then um let me be clear this period six and seven are called the inner transition metals. Inner transition metals. Yes, so they are the words lanternids and actinids. Lanternids and actinids are also referred to as the rare earth elements. Rare earth elements. Yeah. And in the period four, between group two and three, period four between group two and three, we have the transition metals, the main transition metals. So please take note of that. Yeah. So that will be um, about that. I'm coming. Um, let's quickly check the basic. Um, the blocks, the blocks, the blocks, the blocks, the blocks. Yeah. Now we have four blocks in the periodic table. Yes, we have the S block. We have the P block, we have the D block, we have the F block. Yeah, S block is referring to group one and two elements. Yes, let me ask this. Now, this is how you know something like everything about group one and two. The reason why they are called S block is because they are differentiating electron. They are differentiating electron. Is in the what? Is in the S block, like sodium for instance, or let me just speak lithium. Lithium is 3, so that's what 1s2, 2s1. So it's finished, it ends in what in S. That's why it's an S block element. If any group 1 and 2 elements, you'll notice that they end in what in S. P block from group 3 to what to 0, or group 3 to 8. Or zero. Now the group eight elements, they are called either group eight or they are called group zero. The reason why they are called group eight is because they, they are completely filled. They are completely filled out of moisture. The reason why they can be called group zero is because they have zero reactivity. All these are past questions. Please take note of them. Yeah, yeah. So differentiating electron. Is what determines S block, and that is why helium, helium, although helium is a group zero element, yeah, but is in the S block because the differentiating electron is what is the ends in S. So you have one is two. So the differentiating electron, which is S, is in the S block. Can you see that? Yes. So we have the D block. D block uh, is made up of transition metals. And I told you that transition metals are between group 2 and 3. And they are in what period 4. Take note of that. The left block, left block is the tra um, inner transition metals, the lanterns and the actinids. Now we can ask you at this point that what is the first element of the lantern series? The answer is what? Lanternium. What is the first element in period 7 or in the activities? That is what? Actinium. Can you see that? Yes, so that is just about that. Yeah, so this is what period, they, they exist in the what? Period 6 and 7. Lanternings period 6, Actinium period 7. 
Yeah. So yes, before we finally run off, let's quickly check something more. Basic trades. Now this uh, video is actually not an exhaustive treat treatment of this uh, topic. Yeah. So I just gave you an highlight. Now all the elements of group one, for instance, there is no need for them that you can use to master them. Like uh, lithium, you know, group one and lithium, this lithium, sodium, uh, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, cesium, francium. We have to go to group two, start with beryllium, you have magnesium, you have calcium, you have strontium, you have barium, you have radium. Go to group three, you start with boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, thallium. Yeah, now all these things, they are actually very simple. Now I'm saying this because you may be thinking, oh, do I need to master everything? Just know as many things as you can. Because, like, I can remember in my post system question, uh, in my post system, I was asked the question, what is the symbol for sibodium? SG, please note that you are post system. 20, 20. Yes, they asked in my set actually. Can't remember the precise yet now. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yes. So now, um, the reason why Sibodium is actually in the mouse, like it's over. Yes. His name after the scientist Sibob. Sibob. Yeah. Yeah. He's the only scientist that have a name in the periodic table. Like he was assigned a, a name in the periodic table when he was still alive. When he was still alive, honestly. Yeah. So the dynamics to all this actually. Yeah. So this is just not an exclusive uh treatment of the topic. You can join a like um an online tutorial that is mainly currently organized. Yes, you can join the champ tutorial where you treat each model thing, give mnemonics and every other thing, then complete um every other thing. But this is just a summary. And uh, yeah, yeah. So do well to practice lots of questions on this. Let me just give something on basic trends before we round up. That means it goes to I scale, E scale. These what? Yeah, decrease. So decrease across the period. That's the meaning of this. Then A is what? Atomic radius. M is what? Metallicity. And I is what ionic radius. So these ones they decrease across the period. Yeah. Then this one is what increase across the period. So we have like we have two I, two E. So this is the first I increase. The next I is what ionization energy. The next I e is what electron affinity. The robot electronegativity. Yeah, so that's just the um, basic things to be more uh, explicitly covered. Okay, yes, I was talking about something. Champ is an online tutorial that is organized by more than 15 past top scholars and post teams who are willing and serious aspirants to bring their dreams to reality. Yeah, they are intense doing, apart from the fact that the tutoring is intense and are by past top scholars and post teams, more than 15 of us. Yes, we have, there are challenges, tests, drillings, personal follow-ups and mentorship to bring out the best in the aspirants, yeah. So that's just about that. So I will be stopping the video here. Do well to like, share and subscribe. I'd also love you to drop a comment, uh, yes, in the comment box about how well you find the video. Don't forget to like, share, share with your friends, share with everyone and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can be informed of all the uh, videos that will be dropping subsequently, subsequently. Yeah, bye. So just drop a video in the comment box and make sure you are constantly working towards bringing your dreams to reality. You have a uh, great time. Bye.